Wasa 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 Biko Nugged How we doing? What's good folks? What's up everybody? Thank you for the early game here. It looks like I forgot to switch my titles. Not good. Nice. What's good everybody? How we doing? Good to see ya. Good to be seen. I see you, Zando. Zando, congratulations. Congratulations, Zando, for claiming first. Super cool. And then we're going to do into a movie, movie game and some gachapon. We only have three gachapons left. So once that happens, the gachapons are gone. The gachapons are gotcha gone. I got to restock them in time for Thursday. Try and restock them in time for tomorrow, but you know how those things go. Uh, Four-sided die for you, Zando. Four-sided die. That's the best odds you're going to get. The best odds you're going to get. It's a three. Wow. Wow, dude. 50% chance of a bonus game. You know what? I think I, I deserve that. You're just taking them all. You're taking them all, Zando. Okay. Hey, look. You know what you want? You see it? You want it? You see it? You got it. Or whatever, Ari Ariana. Ariana Large says. Zando sees it. Zando wants it. Zando's got it. Gotcha King has spoken. All right. You also got an eight-sided die. Pretty good. Pretty good odds. Seven. No dice. And you got the final Poke Badge. So send me a tear maker. We'll make that happen. Lose it. Ah, oh, I really thought that was going to go in. I thought that was the one. I thought that was the one. No such luck. No such luck. Full set is assembled. Folks, we got some Manga Spice Cafe today. And then as it currently sits, we're playing Beacon Pines, which is just fine by me. Uh, but, you know, typically, typically, Mog Spice Cafe takes like 30 minutes. So, the vote could shift. The vote could shift. All right, movie, movie game for you, Zandu. Okay. <clears throat> the, I don't know if you're going to like this one. <laughs> okay, here we go. But I think you'll get it. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. Okay. <clears throat> a hilarious radio DJ tasked with bringing laughs to a 1970s war angers superior officer Bateman, who murders him while jamming to Huey Lewis and the news. Very easy. Really very easy. A hilarious radio DJ tasked with bringing laughs to a 1970s war angers superior officer Bateman, who murders him while jamming to Huey Lewis and the news. What's up, maybe 30 bats? Thank you for 16 months. Wowzers, dude. Chat's in the clap for maybe 30 bats. Maybe 30, let me know right, left, and how hard, or clockwise, counterclockwise, and uh, velocity. You know how hard you want me to spin that bad boy. Maybe 30, I got a game for you. I got a game for you to play. I got a game, you gotta play it. You gotta play it. Got to. Um, I think you'll love it, first off. And second off, I really think that it is uh, it is inspiring me for our Ludo Good game quite drastically. Uh, especially the storytelling style and the writing and the art. Um, but it's on Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, if you don't have Game Pass, then you don't have Game Pass. Then that's just facts. Them's facts. Uh, but it, the, the game is called Citizen Sleeper. Citizen Sleeper. Highly recommend it. I think you would super dig the story and the storytelling, and uh, you'd enjoy it. Let's see, clockwise 30%. You got it. Good morning, Vietnam American Psycho. I don't like N American. N American, because it's Nam. It's not Vietnam. 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 It's not Vietnam. Vietnam. Not M. Vietnam. Vietnam. It's Vietnam. Um, so it had to be all American, all American Psycho. Yeah, so that one doesn't. That one doesn't do it for me, but both good movies and a very easy one. Very easy one. 
I'm gonna be peacing out in 15 because Tuesdays, but I wanted to pop in for a little bit. Appreciate you, Perry. Appreciate you. You might get to see at least what manga we're getting. I'm all buffery, but I'll check out Citizen Sleeper when I get home. You should, it's so good. It's so good, it's so good. Uh, I seriously have played more of this game than I would have ever thought. Uh, I think I'm like eight hours in, and I have, I've been playing it for three, three days. Three days and eight hours, that doesn't happen with this guy, okay? This guy doesn't do, this guy doesn't do eight hours in three days. I'm staying up late at night and it's too much, and I love it. So it's worth it, worth your time. Uh, what was I about to do? I was about to do something. 30%. Clockwise, you got it. I think this is the first sub spin of the week because I forgot to do Christina's yesterday. Whoopsie, microphone's in the way. You guys just get the, you get the, the edge here. You just the edge. Yeller, yeller. All right, bet. All right, yeah, bats, bats. You get an emote on the Discord. Send me an emote that you want to see on the Discord and we'll make it happen, happen. Let's see, today's tier maker is My Hero Academia characters. I love it. Uh, admittedly, it's gonna, I'm, I'm only gonna know most of them, but there are definitely gonna be a couple in there that are gonna be obscure. Yeah, we'll do that. First, we're gonna watch a YouTube vid. I also have time to do it now because I finished uh, Dr. Old Bull Nonsense for the term. Congratulations, chats in the clap for finishing the stuff for now. End of term, EOTs. Good job, good job, you did it. You did it. Um, so we do have a video to watch, we do have a tier maker to do, and we have Manga Spice Cafe, and then we gotta play a game. So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do first? That's the big question. Uh, hmm. So the video that I want that I want to watch is uh, the Sonic Frontiers game that's coming out. They released a prologue movie. I don't know if it's the first one or if it's the only one, but I have held off on watching it. For those of you that are like me, um, you grew up on Sonic Adventure, which I know that uh, for the older the older folks in our group maybe grew up with the OG Sonic. But I grew up with Adventure, and so the 3D Sonics are always going to be my favorites. And so Sonic Frontiers has me very excited, and being able to get back into the swing of things and see how things go. Hopefully it's better than all the Sonic games that have been made in the past, like six Sonic games. So we'll see, we'll see. Honestly, the Sonic games are not as bad as people crack them up to be. 06 is terrible, um, but the story is still not even that bad. It's a little weird and uncomfy with the whole like human daughter, human love thing. That's a little strange. But other than that, it's a pretty good story. Silver's interesting enough. Sonic Frontiers has me very indifferent. I'm gonna love it. Stream is real buffery on mobile right now. I'm going to have to peace out. Have a great stream. See you, maybe 30. This is... Thanks for being here. But we're going to watch this prologue and uh, see what it has to offer for us because I just have got to watch it. And you guys are here. Very buffet. So buffety. Oh, it's buffery for you as well? Interesting. Now you guys, you made me check my frames. Jimmy Buffety. Jimothy Buffety. All right, let's go to, bam. It looks weird, why does it look weird? It shouldn't look weird. Why does it look weird? Why does it look weird? I don't understand. I don't understand why it looks weird. I've got it on YouTube. What is going on? Why does it look so strange? I don't like this. I mean, I've done this before, but I guess somehow we got out of, out of sync. Somebody knocked it out of the sink. Shoot. All right, perfect. Perfect. I'm still at 90% opacity, so you should be able to see me through the thing. And we're gonna watch it together. Yeah, I'm very excited about this. this the first time I've ever watched this. I'm very excited. This is the Sonic Frontiers prologue titled Divergence. The fact that they titled it makes me think that maybe we're gonna get multiples. And the thumbnail art is Knuckles. So here we go, enjoy. Angel Island, a land of miracles, of mysteries. My home. Is that Knuckles? I am its guardian. I watch over Knuckles. the Master Emerald and every living thing here. That is to say, 
all the plants and animals. Any other kind of civilization has long since disappeared from the island. I do things on my own, and that's just how I like it. I don't need anyone else to get by. But sometimes, so edgy. <laughs> He's so I edgy, man. how things would be if I hadn't been given this responsibility. Why was I chosen for this duty? Perhaps it's karma. My Thousands name is Katniss Everdeen. My ancestors attempted to steal a power that wasn't theirs. Already this has me very excited because this is very much the Sonic Adventure lore. Granted, it was also in the comics, but come on, are we talking Archie comics? Really? Really? I don't think so. Uh, so this is pretty interesting and exciting. Even this, just to see that this is being discussed is already exciting to me. The question is... Did that just say chaos? It, it said originally? chaos. Who built this shrine to the emerald? Stained. No, it totally sounds like the dude. Are you kidding me, man? You've ruined this character for me. It sounds just like the dude. Are you kidding? Yo, it sounds just like him. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to unhear it. I'm not going to be able to unhear it. All right, back to it. The dude abides. And where did they go? What have you done? To protect my home. I need to know every possible vulnerability. I've explored the island top to bottom, but I still manage I've to find that something new every before. day. That's very interesting. New routes between regions, ruins of different echidna tribes, and remnants of some group that came before. Is there gonna be is there gonna be the Chow Garden in this one? If there's the Chow Garden in this game, I don't think you guys understand, okay? I don't think you understand how many hours I'm gonna put into that Chow Garden if it exists. <laughs> Hold on, little guy. I'll help. Um, here. This is what you were looking for, right? Huh? Mm -hmm. Perry, to be fair, I say chow, but I don't know if everybody does. Some people may call them chaos. Um, I, I call them, I call them chows just because I do and because I think it's cuter. This is different. Oh. Phone app is genius, Kung Fu Carl. I would pay for the phone app. It looks old. Even older than these ruins. I wonder... That, I like that screen. What? Where am I? This isn't my island. Is this another one of your tricks, Eggman? Show yourself! So I guess these are the baddies. Oh, an ambush, huh? <laughs> Your funeral.
I really hope this isn't the only one of these we Whoever's get, because it looks really this, good. better show yourself to now! You? We'll settle this in a fair fight! And after I win, you'll send me home! Got it? Huh? Sometimes. And there you go. Did you see that? That's why this was so good. Did you see it? Did you see who directed it? Bada bing, bada boom. Tyson, my man. Tyson, Tyson has revitalized the Sonic universe. If you do not follow Tyson on whatever platforms, go follow him. Savant. I assume it's a him. It might actually be a they, them. I don't know. But Tyson is a, a fantastic artist, was the main reason that Sonic Mania uh, was as successful as it was because updated the art to make it look, make it look so good. Um, absolutely worth it. Worth the look. I'm so excited. We'll see how it goes. You know, it's still the same old, same old 3D Sonic feel. It does look very pretty. Oh, holy moly. Okay. It does look very pretty. I mean, I'm gonna play every minute of this game. I just really hope it controls well. That's really gonna be, that's gonna be the crux of the issue. Nope, nope. Nice, dude. Okay, well, cool. Well, that is Sonic Frontiers. I just well, I appreciate you guys watching that with me. I wanted to watch through it, see what we thought about it, and uh, I'm I'm on board. I am on board. I'm into it. I'm down. Now we got to do a My Hero Academia characters tier list maker. So I'm going to go ahead and look up My Hero Wikia. My Her. My Her Wikia. Right, here's all the characters. But bam. And then we got to figure out how to get this up on the screen. <laughs> Got a balance. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Hope to pop on for a bit later if meetings let out early. We hope to see you soon, Perry. No opinions on characters beyond season four. I'm way behind. Um, I won't have much to offer. I'll try my best not to spoil anything. That'll be my main goal. But uh, <clears throat> what an appropriate day! <clears throat> what an appropriate day for this uh, this particular this particular uh, tier. Uh, is all I gotta say. What a, what a, I don't know. Just a, just appropriate <clears throat> just appropriate timing. Just some appropriate timing here, so I just appreciate that. I appreciate uh, sticking on brand. Sticking on brand here. But full honesty. Oh, it has their names next to them. That's very funny. Full honesty with all of the My Hero Academia characters and the My Hero Academia lore is that I read the manga and I'm way behind on catching up, but I'm way ahead of where everybody watching the anime is. So who knows? Who knows if I'll, if I'll know any of the characters or any of the things that we need to talk about, but we're going to go see if we can get a, get a quick capture. That doesn't look awful. It's a little off though. I have a tear maker one. Let's try it. Whoops. Nope. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Okay. Let's pull up the character list and go one by one. Again, been a real long time. Been a real long time since I've gotten into any of them. So honestly, we're just going to go off of just like cursory looks and glance and what I remember about these characters uh, and if I like them or not. Okay. Cool. Cool. Let's get into it. Uh, all right. Well, first up is this guy. His name is Ectoplasm. As I'm seeing here on the screen, I don't remember what his name is in the actual manga. It's definitely not Ectoplasm, I don't think. It's got to be something different. Um, he's cool. He's a cool design, cool character. Um, I think what he does, I think he like multiplies or something. I can't remember what he does. He teaches math, of course, which would be very appropriate for multiplication if that is the case. Um, but yeah, he's pretty cool. I would give him a solid B tier. He's a solid B tier. He's not super important. You did see the shirt. That's very fun. I didn't know you could see it underneath the hoodie. 
But yeah, very appropriate. Okay, Snipe is the uh, heroics teacher. And this is just Cassidy from Overwatch. You cannot convince me anything otherwise. He's okay. I like that he's a sniper. Uh, I like what he's about. I'm not going to take a ton of time to look into his character, to be honest. I don't remember much about him. Uh, but we're going to give him a pretty solid B as well. Maybe even a, maybe a C, because he's not quite as cool looking as Ectoplasm. All right, this is one for all. No, all for one. This is all for one. This is all for one. Right? I always get him backwards. Make sure I get them correctly. Man, how long do you have to go to get to the, get to the baddies? You gotta go all the way to the end of the line to get to the baddies. All for one. Yes, that's what I thought. All for one. All for one is a pretty good villain. Um, he's definitely, they like build up the hype around him a lot, but to be honest, he's always kind of underwhelming to me. Um, I think there are better villains in this universe than all for one personally, but he's got a pretty cool, pretty cool enough design. Gonna give him a solid B tier as well. All Might, come on. How are you gonna go against the king? How are we gonna go against All Might, dude? He's All Might. He's the coolest. He's the coolest of cool. He's designed to be the coolest character. Everything about him is designed to be the coolest character around. You can't not love him. I mean, I gotta give him, I gotta give him S tier. He's All Might. He's All Might. Best Genist. A lot of people like Best Genist a whole lot. Um, he's just okay to me. I think he's neat enough. Okay, break over. See you, Trombo. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you. Uh, Best Genus is pretty cool. I definitely do like his design a lot. Uh, even though it is a little like lame, it's also funny. It's also a good, good design. A, uh, A hey, dear, A hey, dear. I think her name is Cammy. Is her name Cammy? Uh, man, we gotta find her. All I remember is that it's she's not really her. That's really all that I remember about her, yeah. Cammy is a second year student and she's not actually her. She's Tomo. Uh I know I know zilch about her. I I know nothing. C tier. Uh let's see. This is the animal the bug whisperer. The animal whisperer? Koji? Yeah, Koji Koda. I'm pretty sure he whispers to animals or bugs or something. Uh, he's like super quiet and can only be heard by bugs or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember the rules. Um, he's okay. He always reminded me animals. He always reminded me of ultimate muscle character just by looks. He looks so much like an ultimate muscle character. And that always made me like his look, his aesthetic, his power is okay. Give him a B tier. B tier. Solid B. Oh, this guy, this guy. What's this guy's name? Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're going to remember his name. We're going to remember his name. This is Cement Toss. Uh, love this guy. Love the design. Love the character. Love the look. Solid. Solid character all around. Uh, we're going to give him the same up here with Best Genist. All right, one minute trivia or mystery. Which one do you prefer, Tricky Time Tree? Let me know which one and we'll make it happen. All right, this is Recovery Girl. I don't like her. Don't like her power. Don't like anything about her. D tier. Uh, let's see. There's another of our baddies. I can't remember his name in the anime. Doop -a -doop -a -doo -doo. It's the brother of... The brother of Icy Hot. Man, I'm gonna have to remember these names, aren't I? What's his name? Dobby. Dobby. Trivia for Tricky Time Tree. You got it. All right. Here is your trivia. What is the name of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's oldest child? What is the name of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's oldest child? Do you have until the count of 15? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Zero? Zero is not their name. Xando, you want to drop their name? Okay, this is uh, Dinky, Dinky the Electric Boy. Then answer it. It is North. Go for it. What's up, Tricky Time Tree? How we doing? Yep, Northwest. Weird name. Weird name, but not the weirdest name. We know what we're going to do. We're going to go through Class A. We're just going to finish Class A, and then we're going to move on to the other characters because it makes more sense to keep on this one part. Trivia or mystery, Tricky Time Tree? Let me know. Uh, Dinky the Electric Boy is okay. He's okay. B. Uh, actually, no, I don't like him as much as Cody. See, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. What's his name, though? I Ijiro. 
Ijiro is the one with the brick skin. I think he's pretty cool. I like his design. I like his character. I like his development in the latest iteration of everything. Trivia again. Shoot guy. How things been for you, Tricky Time Tree? Did you celebrate Halloween? Okay, next question is, what is the diameter of Earth to the nearest 1,000 miles? What is the diameter of Earth to the nearest 1,000 miles? I wouldn't get this in a million years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm afraid that is not correct. The answer is 8,000 miles. I would have never in a million years known that. 8,000 miles, supposedly. Supposedly, that's how long. Okay, Midoriya. Uh, I like Midoriya. He goes through some great character development, but he's almost too, it's almost like you have to give him S tier, you know? It's like he's, he's Midoriya. I'm gonna give him A tier because I don't think he deserves S tier. He's fine. Uh, Jiro absolutely gets S tier. Come on, come on! Do you know all the art that is out there with her playing music? And I love music! She's great. Uh, this is Ponytail Guy. Don't like him. I actually think he's pretty, pretty gross. I just think he's pretty gross. He's pretty disgusting looking. Don't like looking at him. Same with Shoji. Kind of gross. Just gross people. Just really disgusting powers. They really just make me kind of sick. Uh... Your S tier are all my favorites. I agree wholeheartedly. Yep. So far, we're, we're right in line. We'll see if we continue. Continue down that line. Uh, let's see. Who is... What's her name? Mina? Mina? Mina's fine. Mina's fine. Mina's fine. C tier. Uh, 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 can I create a new tier? Can I create a... I'm going to create a tier underneath here. Let's uh, let's add a row below. Uh, and we're actually going to... We're actually just going to call this one uh, Banish. We're going to call this one the Banished tier. Um, because I want him gone. I want him gone. Take him out. Nobody likes you. Nobody likes you, Minaru. Nobody likes you. Uh, Momo, love Momo, love her power. I think her power is so cool. Uh, wait, Tokoyami? Who is Tokoyami? You'll have to tell me more. Is that, uh, I don't know. I don't know who that is. Uh, let's see. Ochako, I mean, she's great. She's great. I like her more than Midoriya, but I don't know if I like her as much. I don't know if I like her as much to call her S tier. She's definitely she's a solid A tier as well. I'm a big fan of Ochako. I think she's great. She goes through some great character development as well. Uh, let's see. Sato. I don't remember Sato's power. Oh, to the very top. Yeah, these aren't these aren't in like ranked order. I see what you're saying now. These aren't in ranked order. They're just they're just all S tiers. I don't remember Sato's powers. I genuinely do not remember them. Unremember unrememberable. Gonna give him a C. Unmemorable. Unmemorable. Uh, let's see. Similar feelings about him. I think he's a little overrated. These three are like the the Naruto, the Sasuke, and the um, Sakura, and they're all just fine. They're all just fine. Uh, everybody loves Aoyama. I'm just okay with him. He's just all right. He's just all right, especially with with where everyone else is in the in the anime right now. Um, we're gonna give him a solid C tier, mm, D tier. He's gross, weird. Uh, Sue, Asui is super cool. She's fun. Love the frog powers. Big fan of her character development. I'm gonna give her the same level as Ijiro and Koji here. Uh, let's see, the invisible girl. What's her name? Hagakure. How earlier I said I wouldn't remember her name. She literally is just invisible in my mind. Um, Hagakure never does anything. Never does anything. Never does anything at all. Boring character. Boring character. D tier. Not gross though. C tier. Unmemorable. Uh, Aida, I really like. Aida is actually an S tier for me. I really like his character. I like his development. I like what he stands for. I like that he has values. I like that he feels complex. I like that he actually has like a storyline and goes somewhere and does things. So S tier for him. S tier for him. All right. Class 1B. How many are in, in class 1B from here? Kendo girl. Let's see. She's here. Or who's this guy? This guy's the one that like copies powers or whatever. Or can erase powers. Who is that? Which one is that? Where is he? He's from the Department of General Educations. Yeah, doesn't he, he like cancels out powers or something. He's got a pretty neat power. He's pretty complex, I guess. We're gonna give him a C tier. Uh, don't remember, oh, I remember what she does. Yes, 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 she does, she manipulates plants and stuff, obviously with the plant hair. Um, okay, pretty unmemorable as well. C tier. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kendo, Kendo's at least a good design. I'm gonna give Kendo a solid B tier. 
Oh, how did I miss over? How did I miss him? How did I miss Bakugo? Here we go. Uh, he's pretty cool. I think he's a good character. He's really the, the Sasuke, isn't he? But he's the hothead, and he's got a pretty interesting character. He's he's fun enough. He kind of gets annoying. B tier. B tier, for sure. Uh, let's see. This is the Inventor Girl. I really like her. I really like her design. I like everything about her. I love that her pupils are like uh, little, like, um, what are they called? What are they called? What are they called? Crosshairs. Okay. Uh, I think she's super cool, super fun design. Like her a lot. A tier. Um, let's see. Who else from that class? Is there anybody else from that class in here? This guy. This guy. He's like the super cocky one. He's fine. He's fine. C tier. They want him to be more memorable than I think he is. Are there any others in here? I don't think so. Okay, now let's go to the big three. That is uh, Mirio, Najire, and Tamaki. I honestly don't remember them very much, I'm afraid. Um, obviously, he's super cool. I mean, come on, Lemillion's pretty pretty cool. Love the inspiration. He's kind of like All Might in a lot of ways. Uh, I honestly don't remember much about Najire. I don't remember much. I feel a little guilty. We're going to give her a, gonna give her a, gonna give her a C tier because I don't remember who she is. I feel a little guilty about it. Feel just a little guilty about it. And then Tamaki, I just don't remember him either. I don't remember the big three very much. That wasn't my favorite arc. Hero course, are there either any of these in it? I don't think they are. No. Uh, anybody else from the general education? No. Support, no. UA alumni. All right, best genus. All right, Edshot is the next one. Edshot, don't remember you. C tier. Uh, Endeavor is pretty cool, but he also kind of wants to be a little bit more impressive than he is. B tier. Uh, the whale. I don't remember the whale's name. We'll look at him next. Eraserhead is so tops, dude. Come on. He's so cool. He's so Kakashi. Uh, he nails it, does the character design. They they wanted me to like him the most, and Dagnabbit, they succeeded. They succeeded in making me love him. Uh, Loud Cloud is not here. Midnight. Isn't the whale just Orca? Is his name just Orca? I don't remember anything about him, to be honest, so I can go ahead and put him in C because he's unmemorable to me. Uh, Midnight is pretty cool, I guess. Fine enough character. Again, they want her. They want me to like her more than I do. B tier. Present Mike. He's okay. He's all right. He's all right. A lot of C tiers happening. A lot of C tiers happening. Let's see. Don't know any of these people. Don't even remember their scenes, dude. Oh yeah, this is the first year. This is the first year guy from the like tournament arc or whatever. He's annoying. See here. Okay. Pro, are we missing some? Is Hawks not in here? Cause I was gonna say Hawks is pretty tops for me. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Hawks. All right. Uh, Mount Lady, another one they want me to like more than I do. We're gonna give her a C tier as well. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Mir Mirko's not in here either. Bunny girl? Nope, no bunny girl in here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Kamui. Yeah, figured he'd be in here. He's actually kind of, he's just as cool as Genus to me. I like his design. I like what he's about. Love these, like that pro hero status stuff. Cool character. Fat Gum's not in here either? Oh my goodness, they're missing so many cool characters. This must just all be the new season. Mandalay, Pixie Bob, all of them are in there. I don't care a thing about any of them, dude. D tier. I didn't like that. I didn't like their characters. They were okay. At best. Tiger gets see. Uh, because Tiger's at least a little bit cooler. Let's see, are there any others that I'm missing from this ranking? It's Gang Orca. Gang Orca. According to this thing, at least. See, is there anybody else that I'm missing? Gran Torino is pretty cool. I like that he's like the, um, um, gosh, what was her name? Genkai. He's kind of like the Genkai character from Yu Yu Hakusho for this one. I like him enough. B tier. Uh, Tomo, I actually really like Tomo, especially in the later the later seasons that haven't come out yet. I like where she goes. Oh, there's Azuku's mom. <laughs> Azuku's mom gets S tier, dude. Heck yes. Uh, let's see, let's see. I we can just start pulling characters that I do recognize. The principal gets S tier, of course. This guy's power I actually really dig. The the hat the hat guy that can like store things or whatever. He's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool, pretty cool villain. 
He's got some pretty cool stuff going on with his powers and his power set. I do like him quite a bit. Kurogiri. He's pretty cool. Um, or no, that's that's Kurogiri. This is, what's his name? Sir Topham Hat. What's his name, dude? Mr. Compress. <laughs> I like him a lot. He's got he's got a cool set of powers. Let me give him the B tier. Um, Kurogiri is fine. Fine. C tier. No, I liked his powers too, B tier. Let's see. Shigaraki um, gets really annoying. Shigaraki gets really, really annoying. Um, but he is terrifying. He is a really good villain. They've done a good job with him, so I'm going to give him an A tier, but I don't want to because I think that he's also an incredibly irritating villain. Let's see. Who else? Who else? Who else? Giron? I don't even know who that is, dude. I don't even know who you are. I'm running out of characters that I even know. I've got to start just looking them up. Twice is super fun, super cool. Love the Deadpool aesthetic. They nail it with him. They do a really good job. Stain is a really great villain, really compelling. Love his character. One of the one of the, the best villains in the show for sure. This guy was also a really good villain, but I can't remember his name for the life of me. Moonfish? I don't remember you. I don't remember you, C tier. Uh, this guy, this was the muscular guy that attacked them with the cat people. He's fine enough, I guess. A little Taguro, a little weaker Taguro from Yu Hakusho. Um, no Nomu in here, huh? No Nomu. Magnet, I don't know who you are. All these people that I just don't even know them. I don't remember them. We've come so far in this show. Mustard, don't know you, dude. You're at the point where I don't remember people either. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I definitely don't remember these folks. Spinner. I feel like you followed Stain and I liked you and then you stopped. I'm going to give you a B. The green guy. Yeah, he, he's like Stain's biggest follower. He has some really good character moments. I like that he follows Stain and that's the only reason he's with them is because of Stain. I think that makes him a pretty interesting, pretty interesting villain. All right. Let's keep looking for people that I recognize. <laughs> See if I can find him. Overhaul! Overhaul is this guy's name. Uh, pretty good villain. Honestly, at least as good as Shigaraki. At least as good as Shigaraki. The kid with the horn hat is the only other one I remember. Yeah, he's the one from the from the mountains or whatever. He's fine. C tier. I don't know who this is. Uh, this is 13. He works for the staff. He's pretty neat. Um, but the staff are all just kind of okay to me. This guy's also a part of the staff, I think. C tier. I don't remember who she is. I don't remember who she is. I don't remember who any of these people are. They're all unmemorable. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slot them in C tier because I don't remember who they are. Now this is obviously All Might's six, or predecessor. What? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? There she is. She's B tier. It's pretty cool. Um, C tier, C tier, C tier. All C tiers because I just don't remember you. I don't remember who you are. Wait, I do recognize that guy, but not enough. Boom boom. One A Rock Guy's counterpart. Oh yeah, I don't care. Don't care a thing about him. There you go. There's my tier list. There is my tier list of My Hero Academia. Uh, not really complete because there's definitely a whole lot of characters that they're about to introduce that I'm sure will be added into this very soon. Um, we meet a whole, a whole, a whole slew of more characters in this next season. But there you go. There's my list. So I'm going to save this. I'll post it over in our anime uh, section. And if you agree, then good. If not, then disagree. Where would you put Fat Gum? Fat Gum is probably S tier. Fat Gum's real cool. Um, I really like him a lot. Hawks is also real cool, probably A tier. Um, yeah, we're about to meet some really cool characters. So, save and download. Nice. Very nice. We'll drop that over in the in the Discord. Rock on, dude. All right, well now we have to open up some Manga Spice Cafe. Holy moly, we're a minute, we're, we're, we're 34 minutes into the stream. We're just now doing Manga Spice Cafe. Lord almighty, what are we gonna do? Now that we've found time, what are we going to do with it? Uh, Tricky Tundra, did you tell me how your weekend was? How was your weekend? Did you have did you have some Halloween celebrations? Hopefully so. What'd you dress up for as Halloween if you did? If not, then what'd you dress up for as your everyday life? Okay. Manga Spice Cafe. For those of you that do not know, Manga Spice Cafe is a monthly subscription box that ships right to your door with three manga and a bunch of Eastern snacks. I unbox it every month. They do not pay me. I just really like them a lot. And if they ever wanted to pay me, I'm right here. I'm sitting right here. You know, you know where to find me. 
on this Twitch stream Monday through Thursday and every other Friday. Okay, so we're gonna open it up. We're gonna go through our three manga, and then we're gonna eat some snacks and find out what is inside. So this is, I believe, the October box. Yep, it definitely is. Crazy Little Devils. So it's themed after a maid cafe. So you always get a maid girl. Uh, this is number 68. This is their 68th box. I've not been with them forever, but uh, pretty cool. The Octo Box. The Octo Box. Welcome back, maybe 30. Glad that you're back with us. She's got a little toxic mask. That's super fun. And her name is Kimiku-chan. Very appropriate. <laughs> I love that. Kimiku. Kimiku-chan. Boo, I made Kimiku-chan. And the last time I was at the cafe, it was overrun with zombies and vampires. Well, they're back along with ghosts, monsters, and aliens. Oh, yeah, I forgot. These crazy little devils helped us pick out some spooky new manga and Asian snacks with a twist. We hope you enjoy what's inside. We're going to go ahead and look, and then we'll read through here if anything we have questions about, and we're like, what is what is that? Um, so once you open up the box, you're going to see, as I said, the Manga Spice Cafe Girl, but then you open it up and you see all of the things, the assortment of wonderful things. We're going to go through them one by one and see what we got. We'll try the savory first, and then we'll try the sweet next. So first up, we have these caramel flavored chips. Three in one, caramel, cheddar cheese, and buttercorn. Okay, okay. I don't really like buttercorn. Not a fan of the fact that it's just butter on corn, but okay. It has the juice, right? <laughs> Dated memes. Popcorn, just, just, just popcorn. Here we go, popcorn. Uh, we got some tonkatsu ramen. Love it. Uh, white chicken broth flavor. Sounds excellent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Why? What's not to love? What's not to love about that? Hello Panda chocolate flavors. Who doesn't love Hello Panda? A juice box. Everything fell. All the things fell. We got a juice box as normal. This one looks to be like a honey lime. Yeah, winter, winter honey and lime. What's winter honey, you think? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what is this? Cookies? It looks like little cookies. A little sleeve, a sleeve of cookies here. Very interesting. I've never seen those before. Uh, Choco Bar. Waffrets. Waffrets Choco Bar. We'll give it a shot. They always give me some chopsticks for my ramen. And then Cheetos Shots. Cheetos Shots. Uh, don't know what that's about. And there you go. There's that corn again. It's corn. It has the juice. Do you think they put together this box while they were watching that TikTok? Do you think the TikTok had just, do you think it had just popped off and that was that was the time? Shots, 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 shots. Picking Citizen Sleeper up right now. Enjoy it, my friend. I hope that you really do. I seriously have fallen for this game head over heels. Um, the story, the story, the music, the aesthetic, it's an RTS style. Um, the gameplay is definitely not similar to what we're making, but the storytelling and the art is exactly what I envision, I guess. So, if you play it tonight, I will watch. I will watch as, as best as I can with the time that I have. Honestly, I haven't been on. I haven't been on Twitch this week because I've been playing every night. Okay, let's find out what manga we have, and then we'll try our snacks. Yeah. So every month that you subscribe, you also get 10 points and uh, they have a little sticker sheet you can print out. It's a sticker. And every every uh, sticker sheet that you get, you can print out a sheet, put it on and mail it back to them. And if you have 12, they'll give you a free box. So every year that you subscribe, you get a free box of Mongspice Cafe. All right. Our three manga for today. Oh, another one that's left to right. I am so fascinated by all these manga that are going left to right. Uh, the first one is Devil's Candy. Devil's Candy, I love the art style already. I'm into it. Uh, love the aesthetic, love the look. Uh, I, I love that they even have like an inspired design up here. It's not just a font file, but it's actually like a hand-drawn font. Uh, it is a, let's see, art by Rem and a story by Bikri. At Hemlock Heart Academy, science whiz Kazu Decker shows off his skills by creating a humanoid girl named Pandora. But in a world of monsters and mayhem, surviving high school is harder than getting good grades, and lessons often turn violent. Fortunate for them, Pandora's stoic nature and seemingly limitless strength, paired with Kazu's luck, knowledge, and friends, get them out of trouble almost as often as they get mixed up in it. Science projects at Hemlock require more than a fizzy volcano to impress the class, so naturally, Kazu introduces them to Pandora. 
Pandora, whose violent streak and impressive strength caused more destruction in his already chaotic school life. Braving runaway science experiments, howling apparitions, and a deadly fashion show, Pandora learns that life at the Devil High School is a day-to-day -day struggle for survival. Nice. Nice. And it's an expensive one. This one's $16. That's they, they, a big deal. That's a big deal. All right, the next one is the one I was most excited about. I already knew about this one. Uh, it got spoiled for me uh, last time, but Dan to Dan, I've actually already read the first couple chapters of this one. Uh, this one got recommended to me on YouTube, believe it or not, and I picked it up and read the first couple chapters. I know that B-Surfer or H-Man is uh, hooked on this, so I was pretty excited to see that this was coming up. Uh, very good art style, fascinating story. We'll read a little bit about it right now. Momoyase strikes up an unusual friendship with her school's UFO fanatic, whom she nicknames Okarun, because he has a name that is not to be said aloud. While Momo believes in spirits, she thinks aliens are nothing but nonsense. Her new friend, meanwhile, thinks the exact opposite. To settle matters, the two set out to prove each other wrong, Momo to a UFO hotspot and Okarun to a haunted tunnel. What unfolds next is a beautiful story of young love and oddly horny aliens and spirits. I don't know what you heard, from that description, but throw it out because there is no describing this story, okay? It is one of the strangest things I've ever read. Uh, nothing, nothing about this story prepared me for what would happen immediately after. So, if you want a story that truly is bonkers, unpredictable, Dan to Dan. Okay, last up is Phantom of the Idol. Phantom, oh, and Dan Dan is written by uh, Yokonobu Tatsu. Phantom of the Idol uh, by Hajiki Isoflavone. I've never heard such a Japanese name. Isoflavone? Okay. Okay. You know, okay. This phantom's a cutie. Yuya, one half of the boy pop group Zings, may be the laziest performer in the Japanese music industry. His partner is out there giving 110% every night. But Yuya's sloppy dancing and his frankly hostile attitude toward the audience has the fans hating him and his agent looking for any excuse to cut him loose. The career of a pop idol just isn't the path of easy leisure Yuya expected. After a particularly lifeless concert appearance, Yuya meets a girl backstage. All she wants from life is to perform. There's just one problem. <laughs> She's been dead for a year. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we have a listless pop idol uh, who meets a dead girl who wants to perform. All right. All right. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that right to the bank. Candy corn is the devil's candy. I'm not a big fan of it myself. Are they flopping pages or is this a left to right native publication? Uh, I think they're just flip-flopping. Um, because the names, I don't know, Rim, I guess, could could go either way. But Bakuri certainly sounds, I don't know. Sometimes, nope, nope. Sometimes they'll put on the last page, like, that you're reading the wrong way. Very interesting. Well, I'm down for it. I'm excited for it. Looking forward to it. These are all three ones that I haven't completed. Uh, even though I had heard of Dan to Dan, I definitely was excited to see it in the box, and I'm excited to pick it up from where I left off with it. So there we go. There's three manga right off the bat. Now let's just go ahead and see. Uh, check for left-handed people. A pretty good indicator, haven't we all? All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, $16.99 for Devil's Candy. $9.99 for Dan to Dan. And... 10.99 for Phantom of the Idol. So that in my math is 17 plus 10 is 27 plus 11 is 38. So $38 plus all the candy. Yep, this one's working out pretty good. Pretty much even. Uh, might be eating a couple of a couple of cents, but for the most part, what I paid for the box paid itself off in due kind. Now let's try some snacks. Let's see what this stuff tastes like before we get into our game for today. I'm so used to reading manga from, from right to left that it throws me off every single time I see one like this, but I'm down. What was the one that just did it? I think it was Momo. I think Momo was the one that did it most recently and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Momo. Uh, let's see. We're gonna start with sweet and then work our, or no, start with savory and then work our way into sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and divvy those out accordingly. I guess we should look at our thing and see if there's, see if there's anything that I should know. Okay, Phantom of the Idol is having an anime that will, or that already has premiered. Uh, Dan to Dan, I, I don't know if they're working on an anime for Dan to Dan. I doubt it. That, that shows, I mean, that, that seriously is going to be bonkers. I can't imagine. 
And Rim and Biggie is Priscilla, Hamby, and Clint Bickham. Look at you, maybe 30. That's exactly what it is. Korean American and... An American voice actor and scriptwriter who works with Funimation. So bizarre. Priscilla Hamby and Clint Bickham. Well, there you go. Americans. Americans wrote that one. I'm very interested to see how it goes. Well, I guess Korean American. Uh, an American. Both from both from Texas. Texas. Funimation. An anime will be made of that one for sure. What's up, Emo? How we doing? Oh, we need to look at the snacks. That was the whole reason we were in there from the first place. Uh, popcorn and mini shots. Like popcorn and Cheetos, here's a new way to enjoy some of that classic snack. Wafer cookies. Filipino brand Jack and Jill makes a crispy wafer snack with a chocolate filling. Meiji has a chocolate version of Hello Panda. Um, bourbon cookies. Bourbon is famous in Japan for their petite snacks that come in tiny crackers, cookies, chips, you name it. They have little bits of caramel. And then Lime and, Handy, uh, Lime, Lime and Honey is Chinese brand Vita makes a tart sweet drink blended with honey to create a refreshingly similar taste to Limeade. Cool. We'll give it a shot. Um, we'll have the Limeade to, to wash it all down, but it sounds like these cookies are going to be sweet with caramel. So we're going to start off with our Cheetos shots. Cheetos shots to start the night off. Uh, interesting to try. It's always weird to see like something that I always think of as being incredibly American um, with, with different you know foreign text on it. That always throws me off. Looks just like corn pops. Yeah, I'm not gonna show you them because it looks like a puffed rice cereal. Just okay. <laughs> just okay. It tastes it tastes exactly exactly like corn with butter on it. Tastes almost exactly as if you took some corn and put some butter on it. I mean, wow, it even, it really does have the juice, dude. Oh my goodness, that's actually kind of crazy. It does have the juice. Okay, next up is our uh, regular popcorn. I mean, I have a feeling I know what this is gonna taste like, but. Wow. Wow, it's popcorn. Not exactly crazy exotic. Now this one is definitely more exotic. This one is our buttercorn, cheddar cheese, and caramel flavored three-in-one chips. I don't know if that means that each chip has three flavors on it. Wow, that is an unexpected smell to come out of that bag. Okay. That is overwhelmingly caramel. You can see, you got the chips down there. Pretty standard Lay's variety here. I'm beginning to think these are just all three-in-one. No. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Nope. Mm -mm. That tastes wrong. That tastes like that tastes like you that tastes like you you dropped you dropped a chip in caramel. Ugh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Not the one. Alright, let's try the little mini bourbon cookies. See how these go. Cookie petite caramel cookie. Give you cookie, you gave me cookie. Ooh, they're actually expired. They're expired by exactly a day, so. It's a good cookie. Mm-hmm. 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 Tastes just like a cookie. Is exactly like a cookie. If I had to give that one a one to cookie, I would give it a cookie. Okay, Jack and Jill Wafritz uh, Choco Bar. If you're doing math, I am ending with the one that I know is going to be good. Because I've had them many, many a time. All right, the Choco Wafer looks a little dusty. Not going to lie, looks a little dusty. Looks a little destroyed, maybe. Tastes exactly like a thing. Choco Wafer. Tastes exactly like a chocolate wafer. Couldn't taste more like a chocolate wafer if I tried. And finally, wrap it up with Hello Panda. Let's see what we get. What's our fortune for the day? Oh, can't see that one. 
Our panda of the day is... Hmm? A panda dress up like a tiger. Tiger panda. Bottoms up. Very good. Very good. Tastes exactly like a Hello Panda cookie. If you've not tried uh, Hello Panda before or Pocky, do you even shop at the Hot Topic? Come on. All right, now the Honey Limeade. Honey Limeade juice box. That's really good. Yeah, that's fantastic. Honey, honey and lime. Those are two things that I wouldn't expect to go together. The honey is what's throwing me off, but the honey's actually really nice. You really only get the honey right at the beginning and then the lime kind of breaks through. So you get like a little puff of sweet and then like really sour, savory, bitter, limey. Love it. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, that has been Manga Spice Cafe. I think it was totally worth it. Totally worth the value this month. Pretty good one. Uh, three good volumes in there. And that's what it's really about. You get the manga, you like the manga. The food, take it or leave it. The food is always kind of just uh, an interesting experience. And that's why we stream it. Because I think it's fun to get to see the food and stuff like that. But other than that, that's really, you're, you're here to see what manga we get. And those are three that are very good. So thumbs up for me, Manga Spice Cafe for October. I will see it again in November. Folks, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, Twitch, you can say hi, YouTube, if you would like to. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure if you watched this part in the video, uh, give me, uh, do me one quick little favor and hit that subscribe button, that like button, maybe leave me a comment. Let me know which of the three manga you're most excited about. And let me know what you think uh, about these Manga Spice Cafes. And thank you for watching. I appreciate you. God loves you. We love you. You matter. Bye-bye. Okay. Cool. All right. Back to Twitch. Let's see if anything has changed in general. Nothing has changed. We're playing Beacon Pines, baby. Yes. I'm so excited. I hope we beat it today. I really hope we beat it today. I want to beat this game so bad. I want to beat it so bad. All right. Beacon Pines. For those of you that have not been along the journey with Beacon Pines, I would love to try to explain to you all the things that have happened, but I don't know if it's possible. Long story short, okay? Long story short, if you've truly never even touched uh, Beacon Pines, if you don't know anything about it, we are playing as this tiny little reindeer uh, guy. And our tiny little reindeer guy came, uh, his, his mom went missing a couple months ago. His dad died years ago in a strange, mysterious accident. And us and our best friend are exploring this town that we grew up in that's got some secrets and some mysteries. Uh, the basic gist of the storytelling, as it were, is... Oh, I probably better turn this down, because I bet it's going to be real loud. Oh, oh, cool. It picked me right up where it was. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So the basic premise of the storytelling of this game is um, it's like a branching story tree. So we get to go back and where we find words along the way, and we get to go back and put our words into the story tree uh, to find different options that we might have missed along the way. So we can get to different endings based off of the words that we have in our arsenal at the time. And then whenever we get words further down the road, we can come back and bring them and change the story. Um, we will have the full VOD. So if you wanna, if you were like, hey, this game looks really good and I wanna know the whole story, you can learn the whole story. Uh, it is all gonna be posted to our YouTube videos, Checkpoint Church VODs, and you can go there and subscribe. We post every single VOD that we get, gets posted there. So you're welcome to check that out. And yeah. <clears throat> In this storyline, um, Iggy got pushed into a... Uh, Iggy is not our best friend. Iggy is the school bully. Iggy got pushed into some slime that was outside of a mysterious factory that we got killed at in another timeline. And um, whenever he touched the, the weird liquid, it like messed up in his face. And we don't know why, it just did mess up his face. Uh, so the time passes, we end up, uh, Iggy has broken into our treehouse. We see Iggy and about the time we get there, we actually get bombarded by some clipboards. The clipboards are kind of like the minions of the local town, uh, overlord, essentially. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best here, guys. I really am doing my best to explain what's going on. So basically we go in there and the, all we're surrounded by all of the, the overlord and his minions. And then we, we just got the word that allowed us to take flight. That was the word. And so we used a plunger 
We plunged to a location away from our treehouse. We zip lined away and we wound up here in the ice. And we have no idea why it's in the ice. This is our town. This is Beacon Pines where we live. But for some reason it's covered in snow, even though we've never seen it snowing. Uh, and we met this little this little wise wise rat figure on the right. Uh, we don't know much about him. We just know that he showed up here and that he is now telling us that this is Beacon Pines, but not the Beacon Pines that we know. And that's what we know. So we're, we're getting back into it and we're going to discover what in the world is going on in Beacon Pines. Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep, minding our own business. You were the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Ah, oh, I see. You think you're better than me. When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. Oops. Why is that moving? You big-headed, scarfy-necked fireball. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. Come on, man. Great. How about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. How about you make like a Nat and buzz off? Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Wait! Do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are. You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gotta help us, or you're gonna help us or not. Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. All right, that does it. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. Iggy turned sharply and began to stomp off. Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well. I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. I'm just glad there's a way home. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Oh, he's being smart. Okay, open For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. Okay, so we've seen this before. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Weepwood, or we teleported to some alternate universe, or this is all just some cruel experiment by Kerr and his goons. But this is not our home. You are inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. <laughs> just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. You both grew up here. But the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair. But a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You'd need a, a whole town to replicate a whole town. Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. That which could be moved would be moved. That which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You'd think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tapestry, well, you can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. It has a real aversion to discontinuity, a revulsion even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. Luca and Iggy looked around uncomfortably. So you're saying that someone made an entirely new town and moved us all and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Good question. Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty. The best one can do is to uncover. Nat narrowed his eyes, furrowed his brow, and uttered. 
The source. What is happening? <laughs> Why'd you say the source like that? Why, indeed. Luca began to laugh uncomfortably. <laughs> it's all ridiculous. There's no he way they could... Down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. If this really is home... He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weepwood. Who is Nat? Why are we just now meeting Chapter Nat? Chapter 6. The Source. Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest, but right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Oh, it's my dad's grave. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time I thought I was visiting you, but you've been here, alone, in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? There was no reply. Just snow-covered silence. Why'd you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. We gotta hide! <gasps> okay, so these people have killed us once before. Doing everything not good. Bottle doesn't still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said 259. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave. Some of the family. The people who love them will never know the truth. We do know the truth now. The truth is overrated. The truth is overrated. He bent down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Who are these people? They're playing in the snow? Hey, don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. He's dancing. He's dancing out of here. <laughs> Weirdo. Who are they? Why did they dance out of here? Here, I thought I was a joke. Those dinguses are out here literally dancing on graves. Through heaving sobs. I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie. Uh, not gonna lie. That's a bad break. Thank you, like the lady radio static. <laughs> yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Here's some advice. Icky gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. How's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow, crying like some pushover. Who you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Luca Van Horn. You're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jake comes at you, acting like a jake, I should stand up for myself. Yeah! Kerr and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? Nat mentioned something about a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure would be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? 
What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. And what if it's too big to smash? Biggie flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. I'm always up for a challenge. I'm gonna make this right, Dad. I promise. Let's do this. That is kind of brutal, dude. That is pretty brutal that they took his dad's tree. They literally defiled a grave. It can get awful cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Oh, no, this is Mr. Kerr. <laughs> Help is on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? No, oh, heavens no. Do I seem like a killer to you? Iggy and Luca shared a skeptical look. Well, do I? Oh, shucks. Now that hurts my feelings. Forget that guy. A disc of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow. Two faint seams were visible along the surface. A manhole cover? If it is, I've never seen one like it. Okay, well, I want to do something with it. I guess I can. Wait a minute. If this is the original town, then that means... He darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I uh, came into some possession of some premium grade fireworks. Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So why did you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop, and you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. No, you didn't. Iggy stifled a chuckle. Yep. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But like I said, these were some primo fireworks, so I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as an incendiary redecoration. I'm sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rolo got grounded for months, which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried him under that tree. But when I came back for him later, they were gone. I figured some grown-up found them in Tasha. He triumphantly raised the shoebox. Turns out, it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It was us. Unbelievable. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool storytelling there. That they were able to... Do you think this is a game? Newsflash, boy. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who is in way over his head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. Well, isn't this where the clipboards are? Nope. Ooh, this seems ominous. Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Echo! 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 Whoa! I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. Well, good thing they didn't try to hide it. This is the source! It's a dang hole! How do we smash a hole? Uh-oh. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr! Where's Rolo? I wasn't lying before. <laughs> He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drats, it's cold! You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't Mr. you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source. 
Where they collect the uh, unrefined. Kerr um, scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. The fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? Aren't you in charge? <laughs> oh, heavens no. My role is merely to flash a winning smile and manage various <clears throat> complications. Complications like us. You are a smart His boy. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing personal. Some people are destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is that we all play our part in this life. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. And you happen to be extras ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not going to be so winning after we're done with you. <laughs> now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. It makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Curse snapped his fingers. Scene change. Oh no! There, that's better. Deal with them. Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks, and you don't. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening. Stop. Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of my specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know, I am an exceptional liar. Bop, bop, bop. That's far Iggy enough. Plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and help. Stop, you fool! Call off your guns. After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You all can head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. It's just us now, Iggy. <laughs> you can put that down. What? With a like this? Flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the. Oops! Slip. Ooh! Whoa! With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. Look at how terrified he looks. Oh! Iggy tried to twist no! away, but in the struggle, they both toppled over the side. No! Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. Come on, His dude! His was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. Take the coat off! You reckless child! What have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight. Use the walkie-talkie to call them back. How, um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a difference. They're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of this is if Kerr is out of the picture. Just let go. Save yourself. If he lets go, we both die. I don't want to die. But seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do something selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with insult. Long life? None of you know I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phyllis Young. With a wild look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. <laughs> wow, can you believe this guy? Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Kerr, just let go! No can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loosen his grasp. You aren't gonna kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah. I'm just a no-good bully. Like you, Kerr. 
Iggy, no! I felt his hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for us to fall together. Whack of those traveling calm packs. calm settled over Iggy's face. Loka, let me do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing it's from the castle. It's getting dark, dude. Let me do the right thing for once. Uh, I get to make the choice, huh? Refuse or accept? Ah! What? <laughs> now don't make me choose that. It's his choice. Look, look, who am I? Who am I to deny his request? Luca had no choice but to accept Aggie's request. With He's resolved. Blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Good. That's brutal. The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. Oh, that's kind of beautiful. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Heck of a goodbye, Iggy. If either of them live, I'll be real disappointed. Well, I mean, this isn't probably like the final storyline, so... In this storyline, I think they're gone, but who knows? Luca, you really should step back. What? Quickly. What? Why? Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before perennial harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempest liquamine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself, but doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk that makes things cold and the fireworks made the hole freeze over? That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to create a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in we that case. We have some idea what that would look like. It will take them a good while to safely break through and access the source again. If you know all this stuff, why haven't you been helping? I have been, in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why? What's A my fierce role? A twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Luca Van Horn, you are going to save the world. Wow. Wow! With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, to be continued in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. <laughs> Stop it right now. <laughs> Revenge served cold. Oh my gosh, Setting this was all for a joke? a charm? Wait, <laughs> that's it? This so ends with a chronic I was even starting to like Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we could go and now refuse his request and see where that takes us. Or we could do good chill cop, hard cop. 
So in this scenario, we've discovered that our Gran is involved in this thing, and that Gran has a secret basement underneath our house and uh, is working with the one of our neighbors. We have knocked the neighbor out and, and locked him up tight. Um, and us and our two best friends are going to play good cop, hard cop, which I don't know what that means. Um, we, we tried good chop, good chop, good cop, chill cop, and we died. So we're going to try hard cop this time. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. Rollo brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. <sighs> well, well, well. Mm, Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Tolliver, oh, this was his voice. Oh, yeah, it was like God's Robbie. Um, Mr. Tolliver remained Rollo motionless. spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. <clears throat> Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on... I said, Mr. Tolliver! He the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. What in the world? The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Oh, who... Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. I'll be asking the questions here, punk. Now hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweating. on Beck and Lucas' faces transformed into awe. We can do this my way, or... Well, let's just say I've never needed Rollo, another way. Hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. He slammed the table again. No dance! Mr. Tolliver's what? voice I became don't, I don't desperate. even... He was nearly What's wrong with his voice? His voice is not right. You tied me down! How on earth could I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk! Spill the beans! What are you doing poking around this house? Um, I'm here to help Juniper. To make sure everything's ready. Oh, you're in cahoots with Gran. Gran? Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. Gonna help her blow up the festival, eh? Blow up the festival? He shook Good his Lord. head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, no, you got it all wrong! Where is she now? She's headed to the source. Source? What's the source? It's his where... His faded to a... The town began. Where it all began. Where is what is Operation Sparkplug? With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Why? Rollo swung around with a. <laughs> Why? Why would he pass out? Dang, Rollo! I think he went a little too hard on him. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began. We need more information. Yeah, but we better not push Mr. Tolliver any farther. Is there anyone else who might know? What about the history museum? It just got set up for the festival. Nah, that tent was put out by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library? If there's any information about this source thing, Kato can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. Is Kato the penguin? I don't really have a voice for him. This is a nice library. Thanks, we work hard on it. Aren't you a little young to be a librarian? Oh, uh, oh, I'm gonna give him like a child's voice. Kato hung out here so much, eventually they gave him a set of keys. Now I just keep an eye on the place for Mrs. Novak sometimes. They got you working for free. It's quiet and I get access to all the books I can read. Uh, what could, what more could a person want? Fair enough. What can I do for you all? We need a favor. I already told you in Rolo. I can't put you any higher on the wait list for the next Hank Atomic. And if you're here with more candy, I'll have you know I can't be bought. Call it a personal code of conscience. Actually, we're looking to do some research. What's up, Frost? How we doing? What rank are you now? How much how much Marvel Snap did you get through this morning? Now you're speaking my language. What are you looking for? Here's the thing. We sort of don't know. 
What do you got on the history of the town? Um, there's a county record archives. What's in those? Burst, desk, newspaper clipping, stuff like that. Pretty boring reading. But they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great, we'll start there. Chapter 8 Six feet under, three towns over. Man, there have the been so have many chapters in so many places. through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement. It's going good, but his Frost. focus wavered. Explosives. Things are going good. We've opened some manga. Hidden in jam. We watched that new Dossiers Sonic Frontiers prologue. Figures. And now and we're continuing our journey in Beacon Bynes. I'm so close to the end of this game, I can taste it. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. I'll have to read any- If I have to read any more of those records, my eyeballs are gonna pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm going to end up in one of those asinine death records. Rollo Cotter lived a full and wonderful life till he read so much boring crud that his brain used out of his shut ears. His book with an assertive nod. If you've got a better idea, then spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal, and it won't be boring county records that kill you. I'll put you in the obituaries myself. Rollo muttered under his. Your county record, really? That's the best you've got. When I'm done with you, you'll be the footnote in history. Beck Just slammed like her finger down on the open page before Glenn. Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a Something minute and tickled the back of Lucas' mind. Wait, what was that name, Beck? In the Elbit, Jay Hartford. From the Brookville Tribune, twenty years ago. That can't be right. What is it? Jay Hartford. That's my grand's name. Juniper Hartford. Maybe there were two Jay Hartfords. Grand's dead? Grand's dead? So it is an imposter. I thought it was an imposter, but I didn't know Grand was dead this whole time. Miss Hartford is survived by her younger by her young daughter, E. Harvard. E. Hartford? My mom's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. If your grand is six feet under, three towns over, then who am I living with? The question hung in the air. It ain't my grand! All right, gang, I gotta close up for the Beck night. Beck rubbed her eyes. How late is it? Almost ten. Oh, Grandpa's gonna kill me! I gotta go. Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay, let's meet up as early as we can at the festival tomorrow with my not grand. I'm gonna go stay the night with my not grand. With my definitely not living Gran. What are you going to do about the unconscious man in your basement? I'll think of something. You will? You will? What will you possibly think of? Luca's heart was pounding as he approached the house. If he was lucky, Gran, or whoever it was, hadn't gotten back yet. And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. She's asleep by the fire. He held <laughs> Not still, the violins, dude. His breath <laughs> and listen. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> That's hilarious. No way she didn't notice that her cupboard wasn't moved. Oh, no. No! Oh no! Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he woke up, escaped from his bindings, and left or without a trace. Maybe Gran knew everything. What do I do? Lucas' hungry stomach groaned, not realizing it. He'd gone the entire day without eating. Okay, I can figure this out. I just need a little brain food. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed uh -oh. one, and shoveled a uh -oh. handful into his mouth. Mm -mm, wouldn't do that. I'm afraid your jam delivery will be delayed. He flipped the lid to read the label. Mr. Nuncreed. <laughs> okay, now I can think. So if Gran knows we tied up Mr. Tolliver, I'm screwed. If she doesn't know, then I need to play it cool. I guess the only option is to go to bed and act as if nothing is wrong. 
Grand will think Mr. Tolliver finished what he was sent to do and left when he was done. That's the only option I got? I'm more worried about the fact that I ate Mr. Nuncreed's jam. His mystery jam. That's way more my concern. Oh! Grand. Okay. Stick to the plan. Go to bed. Play cool. As Luca climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. He tried to grab for the railing, just something was wrong. Oh no, it's the jam! Oh no, the jam! <laughs> Oh no! Luca <laughs> and tried to move. <laughs> oh! His oh, limbs no. might as well have been bolted to the ground. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. What did he eat? What did he eat? Sweet boy. What did you get yourself into? Gran Rest now. Let me handle everything. Gran's gonna eat ya. <laughs> Gran's gonna make nice grandsons too. Chapter nine A speech to end all speeches. Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Or rather- You ate the jam. Why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? Yeah, there we go. Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. The festival. Oh yeah? Gran's just gonna let me be, huh? Hmm. Okay. If you say so. Where have you been? I, uh... Grand put something in the jam. Yeah, we know. Secret messages for secret conspirators. Not this one. The one intended for Mr. Nuncreed? Put me to sleep. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. Sly devil. Sly, love it. Nice. New word. I think she's trying to remove him from the equation. He might be in danger. Have you found anything? We ha looked around, but haven't seen anything odd. Your grand is nowhere to be found. But Mr. Nuncreed is just loafing around waiting for the speech. What speech? Mayor Gus just got up to the podium. Everyone is gathering at the stage. Let's get moving. It really is the whole town. And some people I don't Augustus even recognize. Augustus Valentine nervously wiped his brow. Ahem. This is a. Hello, Beacon Pines. Uh, I'm Augustus Valentine, your mayor, and uh, I suppose you already know that. Uh, mm, uh, oh, yes, uh, before we get started, uh, I just want to take a moment to recognize someone who couldn't be here today. Hey, this town wouldn't be where it is today without my father, Sharper Valentine. I thought we could uh, begin with a round of applause befitting such a great man. Not a lot of applause. Even that's more than the old codger deserved. Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly loosened his tie. Right, where was William I? William Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. Gus Valentine, he everyone. Gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Let's hear it for our mayor. What a great turnout. Oh heck, I didn't prepare anything, <laughs> but I suppose I could say a few words. <laughs> Would be a shame to waste such a beautiful podium. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out from his vest. Community, conviction, commitment, these are the things we celebrate at Perennial Harvest. For us, these are the pillars of the bridge to a better tomorrow. But I think it's time to add a new pillar, change. Change is a powerful thing. It's inexorable, unavoidable, and undeniable. 
and I am dad gum thankful for it. <laughs> Change is the reason we're all together today. It's hard for me to believe that it was only four years ago when fate brought me here. A simple business trip which brought me to a small town which would change my life forever. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. You know what? He wiped away a single tear. From the second I set foot in Beacon Pine, something about this place has held me captive. You see, change represents opportunity. It represents potential. It was change that helped me recognize the potential of this place. To see that the people of this town, despite suffering great loss, still held on to the things that he made them special. the podium to emphasize each word. Community. Conviction. Commitment. Change. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent, in rapt attention. Fate made a perfect match that day. Nothing is more important to you all than community. And Perennial Harvest is a community Mr. first and Kerr foremost. methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. The only way you made it through the foul harvest was an unshakable conviction. A conviction that a better tomorrow was just over the horizon. Perennial Harvest was founded on the conviction that we are that horizon. This festival is a symbol of our commitment to each other. His voice began to build to a crescendo. We now walk hand in hand into a future we will shape together. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? Just imagine what we can accomplish. What was that? The crowd began to look around nervously. Don't worry. A little thunder isn't going to ruin this day. <laughs> Everyone remain calm. Mr. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. Where was I? Oh, through all of my travels, I have learned one true thing. One always reaps what they sow. We have all planted a lot of good in this town, and so it is with a happy heart that I he can proclaim... His hands up to the heavens. Our harvest awaits! At that moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. Okay. For a man like William Kerr... This was a fitting way for things to end. On a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end. What an ending. There's that ice again! Whenever I think we're getting close, it comes along and ruins everything! Maybe we should just quit? Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again! No, I... I don't mean that. We got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Please. All right. Good cop, sly cop. Go for it. They'd run the classic good cop, sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. Nice. Each of them got their turn. That's great. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. Uh, 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 what was going on here? You're... you're that Mudville girl. Please, call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Is Juniper sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Gran. This was going to be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you, uh, needed some backup. But she sent a child? What better way to avoid prying eyes? Who would suspect a kid? Well, you suppose that makes Mr. sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. 
that had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. But you understand. We never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're Beck both here her to... Hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep. The old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. She sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out we're going to destroy the source, well, we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. So we like Gran? You, uh, you sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. <laughs> Good, well, there's one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing really. The other day I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. Wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in the perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. And said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know! So we have a password and know where to put it? It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work that out. I've got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated. and She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. You guys catch that? Sure did. The whole time Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf, but he never, but all he ever sells us is apples. Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. The password, Rollo. A little sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine. In the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said he heard a password on the radio. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Hmm, okay. Uh, what's another word for underground? Buried, covered? Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those each letter is a number thingies. So U would be 21, N would be 14, D would be... Ooh, it's an anagram. Nun Creed's Drugstore. He got it immediately. <laughs> and Beck looked at Rollo with amazement. That's great. Rollo, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Crin's Nude Rug Store. Yeah, I, I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. Well, I guess we know where to go next. You scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? Nope. He's got me waiting around like a sli the last slice of pie. Oh, she's like Southern Belle. Okay. I wish I could figure out how to get better at anagrams. I've never really tried. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. Okay. Bye. Anagrams? Yeah, just one in. <gasps> You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. It was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? What is this insipid town festival really about? I think... Gus uh, looked around nervously. I think Mr. Kerr really does just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what Kerr and Perneo Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me. This was our father's town. He's gone, Eris. And he isn't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. This is just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from our backyard. 
They're dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When this is all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Eris's cry hung in the air. We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus, but you will always just be a Gus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. It's getting late, children. I like Eris, and I'm not sure why. But I find her very compelling. Oh, it's the little kid. What's his name again? Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore. Solomon. Holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Hey, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncrete. Is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Then, where, then where'd you get that candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life. Though we might not always have family to rely on. Licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice would be my first choice, but uh, whatever floats your boat. You can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection. Uh, yeah, I guess. I like sour gubs. I'm certain you do. I always wondered why Mr. Nuncree kept licorice in stock. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold, hard cash. Well, he's right. It's locked. There's got to be more clues. Okay, let's see. Can I check this out? Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? Besides Mr. Nungreed, no. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. This is not a normal phone booth. It's got like a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Mm, Crin's new drugstore! I mean, underground secrets! The password! Beck opened the door and they all squeezed in. Down we go. No, right? Let's see. Luca here. cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. <laughs> Sounds like that did something. Great, now what? I guess we. Uh... The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. The suits! The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. I knew it! You knew that there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth. Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool would it be if the trans-dimensional conduits from Hank Atomic issue number 12 are real? Rollo, at one point or another, you've said that about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. Looks like each of these has something written on it. Mining Operations Alpha. Now that I know of, this town is all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Paul always says you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies in the exact situation. That's the thing about Pa. You don't realize, you don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Perennial Harvest Main Office? Uh, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. Is she involved in all this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big! Uh, this suit has a broken mask. So, have we found our mystery warehouse creeper? We've at least found their hazmat suit. 
It's if it walks like a nun creed and talks like a nun creed. Let's not jump to conclusions. Just saying. That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. hovered over the field of blinking buttons. Eeny, meeny, miny. Not good. Rolo, what did you do? Nothing. I didn't even move mo yet. What was that? Hide. Where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. Boink. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Awesome. You all need to come with me now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password, but they love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until after the festival, I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Hold on now, I like my skin. This all stops now, Nuncreed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were friends back he before. Toward the strange tubes. All of this. That's a lie. It's true. I used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on helping others. So you were a sidekick? No. We were partners. He helped the patients and I helped him. I really need this guy to have less lines. Less lines because it takes so long. Yep, total sidekick. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us. Says he's got an opportunity. He'd found something he didn't understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was... What's up, Hunter fam? Mom! We're making headway! We're making more progress! We've got about another hour under our belts of this game. It's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic, classic sidekick, sidekick into villain plotline. Coming into the ending? I don't know! I have no idea, honestly. It feels like we've got to be close to the end. Walt loved being righteous. Almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. Nuncreed took a menacing step towards the children. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this. But you forced my hand. Luca began to laugh. Didn't notice the background music. I was driving and thought my car was dragging something. That's funny. What? 
<laughs> you really don't know? My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Seems like she's planning on crashing the town party. She's going to disrupt the festival? Why would the she... The color drained from Nuncrete's face. How does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, big man. Nuncrete grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. She doesn't understand what it is she's messing with. I, uh... Tell me now! She's in danger, boy! You know, I don't know. She had a map with a mark in the fountain town square. The fountain? But why a would... realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. She knows about the source. What the heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear God, she's going to freeze us all. So that wasn't the plan? You all need to run. I love his ears flapping in the background. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Run where? Away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west. Then don't look back. <laughs> I love that. That did not go how I expected. So we're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. You good? Yep. Boink. I love this town. <laughs> yeah, Beck, Beck didn't miss a beat, man. She got in on the best bits. Chapter 8. The Cold Hard Truth. Dude, we've been we've Beck been to so many chapter eights. <laughs> into the dark. How many chapter eights can we do? Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carom her gracefully along. She heard the tinny. I've never seen that word before. It's very rare that I've not seen a word. Carom? I don't know that word. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. Ah, it's going to be the, little, the, mine, the mine tunnel. Yep. A burst of wintry air snuffed across her face. Got it. Are we going to meet Nat again? Cold. Boink. Shoot. That was intense. Yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids there. Any idea where we are? Somewhere cold. Doesn't look like a gut in any of us. It didn't feel like we traveled that far. Where did it all go? This place sucks. Why would anyone want to blow up something out here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. We gotta catch up to Nuncreed. I think he went this way. Are we gonna discover it's our town again? This looks familiar, yeah. Maybe we can clear off the snow. No time, Nuncreed's getting away. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed on all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of town. Oh, I got it. It's so obvious now. <laughs> Mr. Nuncreed is an alien. Rollo. Stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective kill us all and shapeshift into a beacon pine citizen of their choosing. You never really had me, but you very much lost me there. You get used to it. We should keep moving. I don't know, he did As solve that anagram like crazy the fast. Town Gran! Square, they spotted Mr. Nuncreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, 
as if approaching a beast in the wild. Grand's doing it right now? Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nuncreed was after. Grand stood confidently at the edge. Do we One like Grand? Do we trust Grand? I'm so abyss. confused. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. You never really had me, but you lost me there. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Juniper, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you've doomed this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done, you and your co-conspirators. Gran? What's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this Mr. moment. Mr. Nuncreed turned back toward the kids, desperation in his eyes. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. Rohan back held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Gran, his voice growing louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know this entire man's life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreed winced with anguish. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. And in the stillness, he began to weep or to hum. Ah, I want to hum. I absolutely want to sing. And in the Music stillness, is always the answer. He began to hum. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother, shivering in the raw. Hum it, boy! Is this actually like a composed piece? We need to turn it up. Gran lowered the torch, listening closely. Not that much. Drop back down a little bit. I can't believe he's humming. This game is so sweet. As recognition slowly set in, her heart sank. Those countless nights of consolation, the incomparable loss they shared together. She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Is she mom? Who is she, Through dude? a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. Is she my mom? Is she my gran? Is she not related to me at all?
She knew that Walt was betrayed. She knows the song. I think this is my mom. I think this is my mom. Are you my mom? Full song, huh? Luca lifted his head in astonishment. The last time he heard that melody was yep. the last night he saw his mother. That's not your mother, it's a crane. How do you know? I'm so sorry, my little buckaroo. Buckaroo? The only people who call me that are my dad and your mother. Luca blinked through blurry, watery eyes, trying to see more clearly. He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older, changed. Mom? That's right, Buckaroo. Mom! Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. Uh, Eleanor, I thought you were gone. You should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. Oh, you're a smart man, Joseph. I thought you would have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I don't understand any of this. What happened to you? Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? You tore me up, Luca. But I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. But in, until perennial harvest was stopped, it was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. These are bad people, Luca. They won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. What do we do? We have to stop them. Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I tried beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see now. There's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold, hard truth. Luca gazed down at Nuncreed with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Come on. <clears throat> Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. So I think she got the green gunk on her, and it aged her or whatever. So we're gonna go tell the... You don't understand. He always wins. None creep! Chapter 9. The Devil You Know. What?! Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. What? She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquimen. Okay, that's the stuff that there makes everything cold. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. 
She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse it. under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. No, Eleanor! And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we'll all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar. Excuse me. I will not. This town has a dangerous secret, and perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole town and moved it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense, dear. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated... Mrs. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to... You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. <laughs> Dang, Gran. <laughs> this is growing tiresome. A little help, please. Don't you all see this festival is a sham? An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as the dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry about this interruption. My associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. What's up with all these awful voices in this chapter, huh? You two time and clown. We all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... Solomon? Can we all slow down? Solomon is Valentine! <gasps> Solomon is Sharper Valentine! Reincarnated! He's a baby boy, but he's actually Sharper! Stop it right now! They cloned Sharper! This entire thing! Sharper's been in charge of! He's the one! He's the one in charge of everything! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I had no idea! Oh, stop! This whole time. It's a clone. It's totally a clone. And they're making the goo to age him. Maybe. We're going to find out. We I can't believe we figured it out. Stinking Solomon. Dude, I know he was weird. I knew he was weird the whole time. Alright, he needs a better voice then. And that's quite enough, Mr. Torment Nuncrete. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face. And that's why he always visited him. <sighs> For the black licorice. It's weird that he likes licorice because licorice is an old person candy. Yes, sir. Take them away. No. I want them to see this. Ah, the ever tempestuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You've managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expected something a bit more <laughs> impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter. Your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr. Yes, sir. It's a shame it was cut short, but I thank you for that arousing oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir, of course. 
You've done quality for work for me, William. You can look forward to the recompense we agreed Kerr upon. Kerr gave a bow of deference. Founder, you are most gracious. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. <laughs> what? A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Oh, gross! <laughs> a hushed horror gripped the crowd. <laughs> this is a story about change. What? No! Uh -huh. So you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper examined his new hands. I even put on a tiny little suit. <laughs> I had, I had the smallest little suit on underneath my sweater vest. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Elnor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden. <laughs> this is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we <clears throat> set the mood. Mr. Kerr, be a dear and reveal the sign. <laughs> Wonderful. Shepherd choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Shapey! Hey, Malice. I'm glad you're back, so I can tell you to your face, you destroyed this town, we ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, <laughs> this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. William Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You're clearly lost without me. All that leads me nicely to my children. <laughs> Daddy? <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourself in my absence. <laughs> Squandered. To say I am disappointed would be an understatement. But I... Silence, Augustus! An adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse. A son who is completely hopeless? Or a daughter? with such potential, who inevitably lets me down. Eris, you fail me with admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Uh, Father, I... have been wasting time, my dear. What are you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. <laughs> legacy? <laughs> who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense! The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. 
who was simply too weak to take it. No matter, cheer up! You're about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor, desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part, and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. And that goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frittered away my goodwill. Beacon Pines is mine again. And I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for <clears throat> absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Kerr was never in charge of Blooming Harvest? <laughs> you think that bumped up what? I don't know that word. Could have accomplished all of this? Dawn, I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. Sharper voice reminds me of something, but I just can't place it and it's killing me. Let me know if you figure it out. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for a spell. So I invented William Kerr. Take your bow. You've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously on the switch, elaborate says bow. Go get it. Patrick C. Montesquieu, that's been extraordinaire at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly was the role of a lifetime. Wait, so this Bill Kerr was a patsy the whole time? Now that your secret's out wide in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? The final boss from Street Fighter Four, Seth. I'll have to look him up, <laughs> see if I, I hear it. No, oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know that each and every person in this town fears most. And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha, <laughs> the young hero. I've kept a keen eye on you, boy. You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity. If things would have gone a bit differently, you might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. You can't do this! Oh, but I can! I have won. Never underestimate what a great man can do, given time. And now time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. <laughs> Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat, let's get to work, shall we? And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily, as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The... This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it. We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Oh man, we're getting close. I don't know what would happen if I would have cried there. That art is dope, by the way. Malice. Okay, interesting. And refuse to drop Iggy. Oh, there's so many good options. All right, let's look at, listen to the Seth voice, and then we'll uh, get back into it. Show me everything you have to offer. Witness my limitless power. Show me. Become <laughs> a part of me. Yeah, that's totally it. <laughs> Become a part of me. Yeah. Absolutely. Seth, indeed. That's hilarious. All right. Now let's see how many other characters have I given that name. Or have I given that voice to. I guess let's find out what happens if we cry. No, I want to do the Alice one. So this is whenever Mr. Nuncreed has discovered... Um... Oh, I see. 
Mr. Nuncreed discovered that we know more than we ought to know, and we discovered there's malice behind his eyes. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes, like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncreed's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want this all to be over. Of course. I'm sure it'll all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the treehouse. Luca twisted free of Nuncreed's grasp. I forgot about Roxy. Roxy's not really been a part of it at all. Of course. Luca, you know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. No thanks! No thanks! Thank you! Bye bye! Bye bye! So who is Solomon's little business associate friend here? The festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree, this is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad, it's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. You know that festival sign wouldn't be unveiled? The be two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. <whistles> Identify yourself, please. Nelly Modeville. I'm, I work here now. I am un unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight and get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Woo! You could get a wrench up, uh, you can wrench the dog and sneak it up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junking, sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junkin'? They might as well ask the same thing as you. Find anything good? Man, ever since Pretty Harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. I better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. Back to the treehouse. Rollo? He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo! Rollo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. So is this the one where Iggy has Iggy been to, to its deformed? lumpy embrace? Ben got a two foot tall plush Hulk for his birthday. I just checked on him. Once the again, video his Luca is found himself too in a vast now, Both of your black kiddos' costumes expanse. were adorable. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The sore, he plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping Do we know what the source is in this existence? Until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Oh my, is that right? Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out. As Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward, that's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course, I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? 
The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Don't know who this Just is. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Who is Chapter it? Chapter 5. Dangers big and small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door, a large figure clumsily wriggled up through the, the hole. Is it Hippo Girl? Is it Hippo and Iggy? Oh no, it's Roxy! Stop right there, or I'll... Sheesh, I know it's dark. Wait. Is it Roxy, or is that Rolo? Is Rolo Oldo? Roldo? Sheesh, I know it's dark and old, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are the you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Stop, or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat! Whoa, 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 take it easy. Luca, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like uh, one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle. Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. This is the timeline where, where Rolo went missing, I do believe. Yeah. Yeah, Rolo's missing in this timeline, because this is the one where we found him. Okay. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. So well, Rolo must have been given some of the medicine. Undeniably Rolo. Only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. They also only gave me three fingers. It's not weird. Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. What his the... hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rolo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some kind of green crud. Ew, actually it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. What? I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of uh, smashed my, uh, smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all kind of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome! Uh, well, I'm... I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. <laughs> Danger? <laughs> Rollo shadowboxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Oh, I forgot that she got the gunk on her hair. Hey, fellas, what's With up? With a yelp, Rolo dove behind Luca. Uh, take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened, and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? <laughs> That's my favorite Tom Hanks movie. Large adult friend. Uh, no, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend. One and the same. He seems a little old. I'll have you know, this is a recent development. 
What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who just showed up here out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I can hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca? This is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rolo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yup. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay. So it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay. Just need to play it cool and hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... Come over here. Let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson Ilona to heart. tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided to be better, to be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a great A creep. Peck! He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her to exile her daughter into this podunk town. This place sucks. These people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So, here's what we're going to do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another She peep. sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey. But that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing she your hair more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got into trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? The next part is the important bit. I had this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kirk, are you there? Mr. Kirk. Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Moldwell seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadlines. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be complete before the festival. Now make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir. I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We're in the endgame, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Who's Prescott? <gasps> Prescott was dead in the dumpster! Ah! No! Oh, no! We finally know who Prescott is. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to printing harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I may suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit. Oh, it just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. 
Fox. Please understand, I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You only have a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Wow. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder? Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. No, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field? What is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that buddy at the warehouse was the person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got um, uh, <clears throat> loose ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of here before that happens. That's two days away. Won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we gotta go in and get Beck her. flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this'll help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map from my mom's PH orientation day, but it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big a room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? Rolo started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. Chapter 6. The Heist. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. All right, quick recap. Rolo, you're gonna talk to Roxy, cordially. Without her in fits, this whole thing could go bust. Me, cordial is my middle name. Uh -huh. And how do you explain your He waved your vaguely new... at Rolo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Lurk, thanks for the lurk. Appreciate you. Nah, she'll be so happy I'm alive, she won't even notice. Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. <laughs> and Beck, you're sure Alona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nellie is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then. That, means you, that leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed. Tish. I couldn't remember the elephant's name, or the hippo's name. Where is Jeff? Jeff! Jeff! Jeff? Jeff! Jeff! Hey, Jeff. What can I do you for? Well, I know how much you hate printing the harvest. You hate a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't say it was a wrong word. Gotcha. So we're going to break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. <laughs> I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll the help? The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. 
But I... Give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and abetting you Looking rascals. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. <gasps> what? The man loves junk, right? Junk! Yeah, what of it? Shiny, I've got more junk than the king has copper. Ain't interested. No! Luca wasn't. He shouted out. Poop. Yeah, it's all poop. I still ain't helping. Ain't that. Fighting. I've done enough fighting for one lifetime, and more to my share losing. Time to hang up the gloves. Hide? Jeff's brow perked up. What'd you say? Go ahead and hide them. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. Uh, say what you will about old Jeff, and they do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from One nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I got just a thing. And while we're at it, that crate could come in handy. And this ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of sour gobs should cover it. Put it on Luca offered out his open hand to with a firm and dusty grip. Jeff reciprocated. Done. Swing by first thing in the morning. Okay, now it's just for Iggy. Nope. Yep, there they are. Hey, Tish, look who it is. Luca, are you here to try to tickle us to death again? Look, just hear me out. Iggy raised an eyebrow suspiciously. Hmm, we listening? Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of malice. That makes sense. To each other. Malice? Wow, Tish. Smart guy here. With his smart guy words. Thinks he's impressing us. Scram, we ain't interested. Okay. Luca knew they'd he tried again. All the garbage gave to a each other. Shrug. You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kind of strange. Iggy considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. Uh, what do you say we... Break. Break our hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things, even if a truce means less breaking things. What if I told you where there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? <laughs> Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. <laughs> my, my, Luca Van Horn. I'm impressed. I missed it. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch the VOD and see where that Wailord was. And after this is all done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. But not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like With to cause chaos. Nod, Luca was off. Did you Iggy that, gazed up at Tish. He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. A ran down Tish's cheek. <laughs> I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. She's not a hippo either, she's a rhinoceros. Right Chapter over the dirty words, very appropriate. <laughs> Into the hive. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. It's true. Confidence is king. Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. <laughs> I love it. Just stay calm, Rolo. You can do this. Mm, got your delivery here. 
Yeah, delivery? Mm, I don't even think I know it's about a delivery. One moment. Now, I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery scheduled for this morning. Right. You had to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He has it be kept secret. Willow sighed, adjusting his tool Look belt. Look of nerds. I already like their name. Sure. You know how the founder can be. Mm, I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Thanks. Our harvest awaits. With a such. stroke of his mustache, Rolo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Our harvest awaits. Begged you for the founder. No, I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, this is a need to know kind of thing. Um, I'll he just stammered check. and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. No, I see. If you could just complete Rolo this form. Rolo interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late, well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. You, well, what did you say your name was again? Rolo I'm... panic. A harvest awaits. Uh, that's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Our harvest awaits! <laughs> Ready to light the candle, Tish? Yup. Suck on this, perennial ham fist! What was the that? The distraction was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Just open the door. I've got a job the to do! The clipboard fumbled around in a friend. I... I should check on that noise! Oh, come on! Just buzz me in already! Okay, okay! <laughs> Whew. That was close. Our harvest awaits. Hey, I figure when in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you pulled it off. Nice work, Rolo. All right, everyone knows what to do? Yep, deep engineering is to the north. I'll go with Beck, in case you need some muscle. And I'll head east to the founder's office. You two be safe. That's odd. There's not even any cups for the water. It's almost like it's a puzzle. Would it be a puzzle? You can do it! Hallway to nowhere? What's going on here? Was there anything behind it? Is this some sort of puzzle? Whoopsie. No! Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca, what are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you a okay? A fear of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some uh, strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes! How did you know? They brought me here and locked me up and when they were distracted, I ran. Dang. Okay, you should stick with me. We've got a Solomon's plan. Solomon's facade briefly faltered. We? Yeah, Rollo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get you out of here. We can't leave just la yet. But they'll catch us again. i got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Uh, why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Uh, now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down Luca this way. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. Office of the Founder. Oh, here it is. It is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you, or else I might have missed it. Truly fortunate. Luca tried the handle. Solomon Locked. leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some kind of electric lock. I don't see how you, uh, we could possibly defeat a lock Luca like that. Luca smiled and looked at his watch. <laughs> Just wait a minute. I love that Ilana's on it. You know it. I don't know what sort of funny business you're up to, but I like it. She mimed a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. Howdy. Good afternoon. 
The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. Quick, let's go inside before someone spots us. <sighs> Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Not a bunch of darts in his son's face! <laughs> ah, no! Poor Gus, dude! I want better for Gus. Justice for Gus. Hashtag Gustus. Oh. Rolo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck in a locked door, Mark 24601. Uh, 24601. Need you to get us through. Stealing a loaf of bread. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Luca hmm. pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. They've got to they got to use a different password. A black background. Do not forget my name. Do not forget me now. How, how did you just guess that? Oh, it's this absurd password Rollo heard when he was down here before. Ah, oh, it's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. Ah, these villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. Hmm. Your powers of deduction are as impressive as your Luca luck. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Number 24601. Rollo, I think this should do it. Bingo, bango, doors open. Luca, you never fail to impress. What is that slippery loud even doing down here? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to help her out. I see. Okay, Luca, I think we're close. The next door is marked 13806. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In I don't know what that number means. It means something important. I don't know. Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Crap, we got company. Luca must go faster. One sec, I can't think with all the he noise. He skimmed the screen with his finger. Here it is, 1306. Go, go, go. Curse those fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. He was not trying to help. He was very much not trying to help. Oh, man. No water cups. Rolo. Why would he not knock it over? Do something, anything. Rolo, are you okay? Rolo, come in. Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarm. They're trapped. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolla, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nellie's office. Okay, you two rabble rousers are coming with us. Nope. Make a break for it! Did... did she just kick me? Don't just stand there after them! Alright, it is 3.58, so we've got to go, but I don't want to stop! Curse this game! Why does it have to be so good, dude? Why does that have to be so interesting and engaging and I need to know all the things about it and I want to solve all the secrets and I want to know all the things that are going on all the time because I'm just excited and I'm happy to be playing it. We'll play it more on Thursday. We'll finish it. <laughs> We're finishing on Thursday, you guys, no matter what. Well, I don't know. I guess I shouldn't say no matter what because I have no idea how much time is left in the game. I really thought we were going to be able to finish it today, but clearly not. All right, we're going to go and raid uh, Nerd Book of Nerds. Book of Nerds. Before we do that, I need to read Trombone's latest message. Today, one of the teachers came in after Caroline and was telling the principal about the problem that they're running into you at Carly. Apparently, the problem is the U.S. Postal Service because the mail person is driving down the wrong way of the one-way street, which we used to pick up at the end of the day. I feel like that might have been voice text because most of that made sense. Car pickup, maybe? Maybe. Trombone, I'm sorry. That sounds stressful. Hopefully, everything works out there. 
All right, we're gonna go raid Book of Nerds, folks. For those of you that do not know, we are Checkpoint Church. We are really a church. I'm Nerd Pastor. I'm really the pastor here uh, in this church plant. Uh, we are on Twitch, reaching people, but the real good stuff happens over on our Discord, exclamation point Discord in the chat. Uh, that is where we are 24-7, answering questions, engaging with each other, doing the NaNoWriMo together, if you want to join us with that. Uh, we have a ton of fun hanging out in that place. So if you want to know where the good stuff happens, it's over in the Discord. Um, we are streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. We have the Checkathon this Friday from 4 until midnight. Charity stream that will be going until midnight. We'll play a ton of games and games together. It'll be a great time. We have another stream tomorrow, Sermon Talk Back at 9 o'clock in the morning. Game together tomorrow night at 7. Thursday, 9 o'clock in the morning, we're finishing this game, maybe, hopefully, maybe, maybe. Uh, and then Friday is a Checkathon. So, busy week, a lot of stuff happening, but you'll know about all that stuff and more if you check out our Discord. That's the best place to be. Now we're going to go raid Book of Nerds. And if you will, just as Hunter Fan Mom is doing, go spam some You Matters in the chat because we believe three things to be true about every single one of you out there. Out, uh, number one, believe that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, we love you. We want community with you. That's what we're doing here. And number three, believe that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it. Folks, with that, we're going to go raid. If they have uh, if they have the uh, the thing that you have to be verified turned on, I will not be able to chat. But I will try to chat if I can and spam as many matters and hang out with them for just a minute. So thank you all for being here. Appreciate you. Until the next time that I see you. Bye-bye.